Welcome to Feminized. It's time for a show that turns the spotlight on the powerful women shaping cannabis culture. The cannabis industry is on fire and women are sparking it up. If you like the show, please subscribe. You can also subscribe to the Feminized podcast with Liz Grow on YouTube and Instagram. The future is feminized. Hey, sis. You're now listening to the Feminized podcast. Guys, I'm so excited to introduce you my guest today. Mandy Tingler is the co-founder and um, mastermind behind Cannamami. Um, she's a founder of the Women's Cannabis Awards and most recently, the People's Ecosystem. Now, I know Mandy through a show that I get to participate in called High at Nine News. That's where I think that we met. And I heard about your story and I was just like, oh my God, I would love it if you would come on the show and just tell me all about you and and inspire us all. Oh, no pressure. <laughs> right? No pressure, no pressure. <laughs> but it's I think it's really amazing uh, what you're doing with the nonprofit Canamami. So Thank if you don't you. mind just kind of like diving in there. Yeah, yeah. Well, first, thank you for having me today. Um, I absolutely love the opportunity to sit down with my colleagues and give updates on the different projects that I'm working on. You know, it doesn't escape me that um, I do take on a tremendous amount. Um, often, the probably the biggest question I have people ask me all the time is, "How do I do it all?" And I always say, "I have amazing partners and amazing teammates." And um, I am just an innovator. I've always got an idea and I am really quick to jump in and implement it. So um, thank you for having me on today. And I'm just like really excited to give updates on some of the fun stuff I've got going on. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, one of this, you know, fun projects um, is is one that is getting a lot of attention lately. Mm -hmm. um, as more and more states are legalizing and more women are becoming familiar with the medicinal properties of cannabis, they're finding that, hey, um, this may help during pregnancy. Yeah. But it's like nobody wants to talk about it because you can get your child taken away from you by CPS if you are a drug user and cannabis is a federally illegal substance. So what, what compelled you to, I guess, pick up this mantle and um, yeah. start a nonprofit around cannabis and motherhood? Cannamommy uh, was really founded out of necessity for women. Um, we actually say that our mission is to revolutionize and redefine motherhood. Yes. And um, through that process, what we do at Cannamommy is we help moms who want to put plants over pills as their first method of helping uh, raise their kids. Um, and that goes all the way from, you know, prior to even being pregnant, all the way through pregnancy, delivery, and on into parenthood and ch child rearing years. Right. And um, my partner, Kelly, um, was the original founder of this organization and this idea. Um, unfortunately, she uh, faced some of her own challenges with Child Protective Services early on in her parenting and um, dealt with her fair share of issues through that and was inspired to be able to stand up and help align with other mothers who are facing similar challenges and provide a support system for them, help give them the benefit of her experience and connecting them to different resources that were available, be it, you know, products that were safe to use or potentially a referral to a lawyer for free consultation, um, to visits with nurse practitioners and physicians physicians to ask all of their their clinical questions as it pertains to cannabis. And so I'm really proud of her. Um, I have been working as her board president for the last five years while we were slowly putting this entity together. And uh, this year, we really are going to be bringing the full court press as far as Canamami empowerment is concerned. Um, we've been asking all of our members and all of our followers regular questions about why we're not allowed to utilize cannabis in hospital settings during labor and delivery and even pregnancy to manage major symptoms that come along with being pregnant yeah. and um, how the medical system offers alternative suggestions that are far more invasive that have a proven track record of causing disabilities or cognitive delays in uh, child's development. 
Mm. and also are not really that great for the mother. I mean, Cannamami is really coming after, frankly, the epidural. We're not even seeing other cannabis products as our um, our competition. We see them as allies. If we find great products for mothers, we highlight them. We want to talk about them. We want to collaborate with these brand owners. But Cannamami's mission is to help mothers feel empowered, right? Yes. We, we need to feel like we are in the driver's seat of how we choose to parent our children. We need to feel empowered to go into a doctor's office and say, no, just because I'm pregnant and I want to manage pain during my labor and delivery, that doesn't mean that I need a big giant needle shoved up my spine, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It means that I should be able, if I'm able to take this epidural that has all of these insane chemicals in it, if anybody's ever Googled what is in an epidural, I'm not going to share it right now. I want you to read it for you. I mean, feel free, feel free to share um, anything you need to, but I think it's important because there's a you tremendous know. amount of chemicals that you are told not to put in your body mm. in an epidural. Mm. And so, yes, while you're under the care of a physician, um, plenty of physicians understand the pain management benefits of cannabis. They're mm -hmm. just not allowed to really implement it in their care, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And I, there's plenty of doctors now out there, especially in California and other states as adult use is coming online, who are getting more and more brave and more outspoken about how cannabis does benefit but they're not allowed to dose you or tell you how much you can have or whatever. Um, and if you test positive for THC at labor and delivery, well, you're really at the subject uh, or at the mercy of the hospital and subject mm -hmm. to whatever their written or unwritten policy may be. Part of the research that Kelly did over the last several years was contacting hospitals all over the U.S. And less than 10% of the hospitals that we contacted had an actual written hospital policy on what happens when a mom tests positive for cannabis. Oh, well, I mean, it's like the most, it's the most seminal moment of a child's life, truly, after birth. And it needs to be with, you know, its mother. And the state wants to dislodge that. Like, that's the sickest thing to me. That's the thing that I can't ever fucking get with. That um, we have it, to have they would propose that it would better parent this child than its mother right. who chooses a plant as medicine. Holy shit. It's a less invasive <laughs> thing. If you think about it, I don't know if you've ever seen an epidural needle, but there's I had an epidural. Yeah, I had an epidural. In yeah. your spine, yep. right? And yep. then you can't walk afterwards, yeah. right? For hours, yeah. you're not allowed to get up and move around. Yeah. Which delays your beginning of your recovery process. As we yeah. know that if you get up and you start moving your body around, it's likely to start healing a little bit faster, mm -hmm. right? It mm -hmm. also makes things way more challenging for an epidural fail, right? How many right. times has, have women gone in for their epidural and had to be stuck more than once? Yeah. And oh, about God. 10% worth of epidurals fail. Yeah. According to the research that we've been doing. Oh, so, I have, to mention, I let's talk about mind. cost effectiveness, right? Yeah, please. please. I just want to say my my personal experience. <laughs> I'm seriously about you're making hundred dollars versus tens of thousands, right? So it's just, it's yeah. a question that we as women really need to be hammering on when it comes to our medical care. It's the same thing as, you know, our, our rights to choose whether or not we are going to have a baby and carry a baby full term or whether mm -hmm. we're going to get an abortion or whether we're taking birth control or whatever you're choosing to do right. for your body, whether you're getting a vaccination or you're not, Right. These right. are all choices. And I, we, our goal ultimately is to help mothers feel very empowered in picking plant options for their family. And mm. I'm not saying to never use pharma. I'm saying that there's just less invasive options and alternatives that we should feel free to explore before we feel obligated to go to the pharmacy or have a, sh a spine the final, you know, injection. Mm, so yeah, yeah. We're totally. really just running with this amazing idea that we help support moms. Um, we help connect them with really great products, including our own product line. We have a bath bomb line and then we have an all better cream that's 
really good for pretty much everything. It's great for um, pre-labor, help getting your cervix dilated. It's great for post-labor, for yeah. increasing or uh, decreasing inflammation. And Is it also THC? It's a CBD-based product only. Mm. It's really good for inflammation. And then it's also very good for helping with stretch marks. It's great for, you know, when you're starting to nurse and your nipples are really sore and painful, mm -hmm. it helps alleviate some of the inflammation and discomfort there. It's safe for babies. Our product has, it's very simple ingredients. Um, our all better cream literally just has two ingredients in it. It's coconut oil and CBD. Uh, wow. We've used that's... it. We've had moms that using it yummy. for feeding babies. They rub it on yeah. the gums of the baby. Um, is it full spectrum CBD or is it an isolate? Yeah, it's a full spectrum. Oh, nice. Nice. Oh, I love that. Yeah, it's beautiful. So, so it is hemp based, right? Um, and we do mm -hmm. do lab testing and everything on our products. Um, but ultimately, we're just trying to create access to a product line that moms can feel really safe using. They're very basic. They have very clean ingredients. Um, they're lab tested. And then we have an entire community that we connect with at, at um, Canamami. We have our um, online clinic where you moms can go in and schedule appointments to meet with clinicians and nurse practitioners. Uh, we host office hours where individuals can come and schedule appointments with either myself or Kelly um, to talk with them about what their rights are and, and how to advocate for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, in many settings, it's not just the doctor's office, frankly, it's at school. It's in your kids' recreational activities. It's, right. Um, it's with other parents, right? Because so many moms mm, out that. there don't even really realize that there are other options. They just think, I mean, think about this. When you, you you've had a baby, right, Liz? Yes, yes, 17. So do you remember back to when you first found out you were going to have this baby? Yes. And people started maybe talking to you along the way of, what you had to do, the ins and the outs, the do's and the don'ts, mm -hmm. what your Everyone choices were, right? Right now, there's only two options for pain management during labor and delivery. One is your epidural and the other is not a damn thing. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of in-between in there, you know? Oh, there is a lot of in-between. We it need just... to start be asking that. We need to start to ask that question more. Why? More whys. Right. Absolutely. Why? It's it's 2022, for God's sakes. This is America. How do we not have, you know, a whole menu at this point? But, you know, follow the money. Um, I, but I love what you said about Canamama be, Canna Mommy being advocates for moms in, in every scenario. Um, you know, scenarios just beyond medical. Um, it feels like a really awesome just like support group yeah. for, you know, of women. Who are just looking to like not have to feel like they have to justify the weed shirt that they're wearing. Okay. Right. Cause I always wear weed shirts and I love weed shirts, like right. cute weed shirts, but you know, being in Texas sometimes and it's just like, oh, yeah, yeah you I get like that to... look. You get that yeah. you're an irresponsible parent look sometimes or like, really? I know. Oh, it's like, <gasps> I feel, and I, I do, I still feel bad. I'm like, oh, God. Yeah. Back in California, um, before the Adult Use Act passed, I was growing cannabis in my attic mm. and I was working full time at a nonprofit counseling organization that I had farm, uh, founded. And, you know, the pressure was real. I mean, honestly, I really wanted people to have access to free counseling services. I thought if we could just mm -hmm. help people get access, then we would have no excuse for hurting yeah. others and for being damaged and all these things, right? Fix uh. yourself. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but I also had to pay for myself to live. <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That, it's not that, easy. But it's interesting definitely... the path yeah. of care, you know, that yeah, you definitely. um that you took. What's funny is I was a, a psychotherapist too, like master's level, and I was for profit. Yes. <laughs> I had a practice for about six years and it was awesome and fun. And I learned so much about life, I think but it really took its toll. And I feel like I've been drawn to cannabis because it is so nurturing. Like if you're a good communicator and you're able to really share this information, you can really change lives. Yes. Like a massive, like a, a like at scale versus like yes. one to one. 
And I it. feel like that has been one of the, the most important pieces of my personal mission in this space is to be able to help people who don't understand this plant to develop yes. understanding and to teach and be able to articulate it in such a way that literally anyone would be willing to listen to it. You just have to find what they care about. Yes. Right? And then connect it. This plant is the greatest connecting thing of all time, in my opinion. Oh my God. Amen, <laughs> sister. Amen. It's like this show feminizes. It's just a joy because I just talk to amazing women um, who are at, and cannabis is kind of the reason we're talking yep. because, you know, I, this is the what I do. Connector. I love it. It's, it's our, yeah, it's the greatest connector, but I learned so much about, so, you know, just many different women and, um, just different ways of being as a woman in this industry. I don't know. I'm just super inspired by it. And cannabis is just the connector, you know, I feel so enthusiastic because, <clears throat> you know, and there's got to be this great connection between the fact that this plant is a feminine plant, yeah. right? And I really feel like this industry has the very, it's the very first industry of, of any kind that has the potential for a dominating feminine leadership movement, yes. right? Yes. And I really feel like the women that I come across in this industry have such talent mm -hmm. and they have such conviction and yeah. such drive that it's empowering on a daily basis. I mean, if I just need a lick of inspiration, I'm a phone call away from someone fantastic. Right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, it's so, it is, it's so empowering. And um, I just, I feel energized and it's because of the women who are really dominating the movement, as, as you say. Um, and I understand what the numbers say, you know, yeah. certainly women leadership positions are dwindling and uh, money going to women, um, you know, mm -hmm. funded, founded companies are dwindling all that stuff, but it, it's going to be fine. We're going to be yeah. fine. We're just now like connecting even more than ever, I yeah. think. So it's like, look out guys, if you even want to look out, but you're just, you're already looking at us. The feminine revolution, like, it's happening. It's already, ha it's underway in this very minute. It's underway. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. So um, speaking of the feminine revolution, talk to me about the women's Canna awards. Ah, yes. That okay. is exciting to me. Very this exciting. This one, to I'm me. so excited about. It's the thing that every day when I wake up, I'm like, this is going to be huge, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So empowering women in cannabis is just such a huge core value of mine, um, both getting non-cannabis users to come and feel empowered to use it, and then also um, creating space for feminine leadership in this, mm. in this industry, and really assisting and creating space for brands that are women-owned to be highlighted and, and, and honored, because frankly, at my delivery service, when I look around at all of the products that I carry on the shelf, my favorite ones are created by women-owned brands, but yes. they get overshadowed a lot yes. by some of these very well-funded, um, you know, VC inflamed, you know, male-owned <laughs> brands. <laughs> VC inflamed. Oh my God. That's the best um, descriptor I have ever heard. It's like an inflamed <laughs> hemorrhoid. That's, much, um, that's how I so think I really of some of these guys. I really wanted to create this platform where women in this industry would have the opportunity to really shine. And last year during uh, International Women's Appreciation Month, so last March, I was looking around my delivery service and I was looking at all the brands and I realized I had like 15 products on my shelf that were made by women-owned companies. And so I reached out to the owners of all these companies, invited them to a Google Meets phone call. And I said, listen, I want to do something to honor all of our brands uh, this month. Like, what can we do? And everybody had different ideas. And right as I was sitting in that phone call with everybody, um, I said, how would you guys feel about Canagram and delivery putting on an award show competition only for women-owned brands? And I was, yes, this sounds like such a great idea. And so immediately I went around to a couple of my colleagues who I knew were 
really close to, you know, public relations and marketing because I knew I was going to need to do this fast and yeah. I needed help to do it fast. Yeah. And so within about 80 days, we put together an entire production. We even were able to get linked up with the gentleman who put on the California State Fair cannabis exhibit during the big state wow. fair out here. And they invited us to host a Women in Weed weekend at the State Fair. It was the most well-attended um, weekend of the entire three weeks of the State Fair. And we had standing room only in the building. We had over 30, I believe it was 33 brands participated. Wow. Um, had five celebrity or semi-celebrity judges. Um, we selected judges from the Canagram customer base as well. And then the press and media coverage that we got for putting on this event was absolutely beautiful. And the entire event was put on just by sheer goodwill. There was no money wow. and then exchanged hands. There was just a lot of great feminine energy and everybody wanting to bring this forward. And so this year for 2023, we have big plans. Yes. Um, the committee is well underway. Uh, the event date will be on August 19th in Oakland. We have a big, beautiful event venue that is consumption friendly for edibles, beverages, vapes, and dabs. And then they will let us smoke outside, uh, smoke flower outside. And uh, the event is going to be very much so like the Emmys or an award show. So it will be a gala style. Everyone will dress up. Um, okay. We'll have a very VIP vibration to it. We will have a full blown meal and um, people will be able to reserve tables or buy multiple tickets. Uh, the general public will be able to buy tickets at a certain quantity. And right before that event starts, we will actually have a farmer's market featuring women owned California cannabis brands. Yes. Our goal long term is to help replicate this exact format in other states so that all these women on brands can start getting the recognition that they deserve. Yes. Oh my God. It's, I'm just so excited to be able to take part because I'm going. Um, like <laughs> there's no question. You I'm, I'm going. Yeah. Of course, you know, I have to look at my, like my mom, like softball schedule. Um, but you know, go ahead and pencil me in for at least one of the days. My God. Um, but what's just so cool about it is you walk in knowing what to expect, like right. women in cannabis and the best brands and the brands that are really proud of what they're doing yep. and the brands that want to be among the community, you know, not everybody has to take part um, and, and put their brand out there, but it's really, really cool to see, you know, be, be a, able to easily identify those brands who are most proud of what they're doing so we can support that way you There's know a big difference too you know um i've been fortunate enough to be selected to be an emerald cup edibles judge for the last three years and awesome. one of the things that i've noticed that is just a very obvious theme is that every product i've ever had that is created from a women-led company stellar products, top-notch ingredients, beautiful packaging, well-marketed, great flavor, great infusion methodology, just really well thought out product. And then we have products that come to market and all of the ones that I'm like, what was going on when this was made? Or why did they cut this corner? Or why did they decide yeah. to do this simulation? They're not owned by women. And I'm not saying that they're bad. There's a marketplace for everything, but women right. really put a lot of thought into the creation and formulation. They have, they're thinking of their customer, yes. right? They're thinking yes. of the health choices that customer needs. They're thinking of quality. They're thinking of themselves, right? Yeah. And identifying with what they would want to purchase themselves. And I think that, you know, there's just so many brands out there that are budget brands and really just kind of, uh, you know, doing the lesser quality ingredients. And I don't see that those brands like are meaningful to anybody. It's just cheap weed. Right. Right. It's just cheap weed. And it's, um, you know, it serves, I, I guess, a certain percentage of the population. Um, some consumers don't really care. I think, That's I mean, true. there's just, and it's just what it comes down to. And it's like, they just want a new product and it's like 
that's the way it goes. Whatever's the cheapest, we're going to get them the highest. Yeah. Yeah. And, and whatever, whatever works, I guess. But yeah, it's, if you're trying to create an enduring brand, which is by far the most valuable thing you could do with your time, you know, you don't cut corners yeah. Um, or at least you don't do it intentionally and <laughs> you learn from right. mistakes and you, right, right. you know, you try to put that best, the best product out there. And so that's going to be really cool to see what brands are out there and um, what they have to offer. And um, man, I can't wait. So tell me, what are some really dope female owned brands right now What on your radar? Yeah. So there's so many. Um this year, we're going to open up the competition to not just the regulated market. We're going to open it up to the hemp market as well. Yes. Awesome. So there will be a CBD only category. Um, and I think this year, the companies that, well, the companies that really have been standing out to me, um, pretty much are the same ones that stand out all the time. Right. There's a company out in California here called Kikoko, absolutely dynamic. They make mm. fantastic products. They have everything from low dose, um, you know, herbal teas yeah. to infuse Manuka honeys to high dose tablets. She's been um, at it for a minute. Like she's an, yeah. she's an older woman. Is that right? Yeah. Well, it's two. two. Um, they're co-CEOs, Amanda and Jen. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. They're amazing. Okay. Yeah. I love, I just love to hear you say that because I remember years ago, being kind of turned on to that brand. I, I think I, I met one of them at this um, circle, this women's summit in yep. Houston. And uh, that was just like, it's, she was just so cool and inspirational. And it's cool to hear yep. that it's still like a really awesome brand. Both the leadership at that company is really amazing. They're just really, really good people. Um, I also am really excited about, there's a brand that's uh, growing up here in Sacramento actually called Cam. Mm. And um, that company is women owned. She's an absolute little beast. Um, also another company that I'm really obsessed with lately. Oops, sorry, my phone just started ringing. Um, yeah. Another company that's women owned that I'm really obsessed with lately is the People's Ecosystem. Yes, um, hello. Been you know, hmm. very fortunate to be able to follow the journey of the founders of that company since their their inception um, several years ago, I guess coming up on eight years now, I believe that we've been. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And um, it was really kind of a it's been a really amazing journey watching everything kind of unfold. But the the mission of this organization is uh, one that gives me goosebumps. Mm. It's really inspiring. It's not just focused on women. It's focused on really anybody who's been a, in a disadvantaged, you know, community of yeah. BIPOC women owned. It's um, the the head formulator for all of the edibles, uh, Chef Charlene, who is a chopped show champion. Um, she's an absolutely dynamic woman, just all around fantastic human being. There's Christine De La Rosa, who is the other oh, she's amazing. And president. Christine's um, really groundbreaking. Her expertise is from finance and tech. Um, I think that there's probably 8,000 committees she's been asked to join at this point. And I don't even know. When people ask me how I do everything I do, I say, ask her because she's doing more. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and she also serves on the board at NCIA and a number of advisory committees. She's just absolutely dynamic. She's a thought leader when it comes to um, the topic of social equity. Um, and really, as a company uh, ethos altogether, they are just really championing the concept that before we can ever go create true social equity programming, we have to come to a consensus on what the definition of social equity actually is. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, and you hear me talk about this on the news all the time. Every time the term social equity comes up, it's like the first thing that I say, because yeah. the community can create a social equity program, but until we all can agree on the definition, the programs are probably going to fail. Right. And yeah. I mean, how do we know we're successful if there's no definition? You know, it's like it's not you shouldn't attach it to what we think we should do. Right. We all know it's the right thing to try to balance the scales in any way possible to, un, you know, 
help to heal some of, you know, the damage that's been done by the war on drugs, Mm -hmm. but for God's sake, it's like, do it with intention. It's, it's just a joke. And, you know, it's a shame because more people get hurt that way. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And, you know, this is my perspective outside of looking in from Texas, just wishing that we could have a, a more robust program and people would be talking well, about social someday. equity. <laughs> you know, it's coming, right? There's yeah. people in your state, yourself included, who yeah. are fighting for it, right? We and are. Every day you gather more voices and more voices. And and over time, the state of Texas will have but no choice, right? Like everybody. Right. Choice is, it's inevitable and you, or ch- uh, change is inevitable. And yeah. you, you're you either going to force the state's hand or they're going to realize that, oh my gosh, we're missing out on such opportunity right now. Exactly. Right? Yeah. It's not what, it's not if it's when. And, you know, we just want to every day help to open the eyes of Texans to what we're missing out on. In a yeah. lot of ways, okay. A lot of ways, not just our own health benefits, but economic liberties for our farmers, you know, um, and you know, our our medicine, our, our choices about medicine for our families, and you know, the opportunity to um, just do some real good. I think when it comes to uh, yeah. you know, cancer research and, and and other things that we do so well in Texas, but it's like let's add cannabis to the conversation, okay. I'm off yeah. my soapbox. <laughs> you know, I haven't read recently what the legislation is in Texas regarding, you know, talks about other psychedelics, but it's interesting to me that a lot of states that have really drugged their feet on cannabis policy seem to be more open to psychedelics. No, we passed a bill last legislative session, Bill 1802, um, mandating the study of psychedelics with veterans. So Baylor, okay, Baylor Med School is running these trials right now. I mean, it was almost instant, but the way that happened and the way a lot of these bills in Texas happen is underground, is very quietly. It's you know, um, Texas politics are, it's an ingrained institution and it's not going anywhere. So, you know, as advocates, it's just, it's can be frustrating, you know, right. because we feel like we don't have much control, but there's so many people working on our behalf, you know, advocacy groups who are at the Capitol, who do have these relationships and who are part of these conversations. So I do just want to like, you know, shout out Texas for that and shout out Texas advocates for that. Yeah, absolutely. But we, I mean, yeah. it's, it's not easy work, right? No. Um, advocates are really the ones who sacrifice the most. Uh, they sacrifice and step up and when other people are being very stigmatic, right? Yeah. Um, they're also the ones who get the door slammed in their face the most. They are also the ones who write the most checks. Like it's just, it's, they're the movement creators, right? I always mm. say that when you meet somebody who is a true advocate of this plant, nothing gets in their way. Like they're right. on a mission and yeah, I've been one of those people for a long time. Seems like you are too. <laughs> Hell yeah, absolutely. It's again, it's not if it's when, and um, we just have to keep beating our drum, sister. Yep. Um, okay, so I could talk to you all day long, Mandy, but I know that um, you are a busy woman, and so I'll be respectful of your time. But before I let you go, I want to ask you a few questions. Sure. Um, great. Yeah, I ask the same three questions of all my guests because I'm really nosy and I love the answers. They're always so diverse. All right, here we go. If you'll indulge me. First question is, tell me who's in your dream smoke circle, three people dead or alive. Ah, okay. For sure. Lizzo. Yes. I'm obsessed with her. And Lizzo, if you ever see this, please just call me. I am dying to meet you. (laughs) I've seen her three times in concert. And they were intimate times in concert. So I feel like um, the last time was ACL, so it wasn't so intimate. But yes, I fucking love that. I need to meet her. I just know that her and I were meant to be friends. I hope it doesn't sound creepy weird, but I just know it. <laughs> All right, she's there. She's there. Who's next? I love that. Um, Amelia Earhart. Ooh. Um, my car is actually named after Amelia Earhart, but oh. I, I just, I've read so much about her life historically, and she has been an inspiration to me since I was a little girl. And let's see, who would my last one be? Hmm. 
That one's a tough one, but I yeah. think I might have to go with Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Oh man. RPG. Yeah. I Hell think yeah. that's my circle. It's an epic circle. Can you imagine right? Lizzo and RBG <laughs> hanging out together? Yes. Oh, epic. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Um, okay. All right. Amazing. Okay. Question number two. Question number two. Um, on Feminized, I get to interview the dopest women in the game and those women who are inspiring me, like you, Miss Mandy. Um, tell me what women are inspiring you right now. Oh my gosh, the list is so long. Um, yeah. Women who are inspiring me. Well, I I mentioned Christine De La Rosa already. She's yes, just at the top of my list and at the tip of my lips these days. I'm always talking about her. She is making me such such a proud friend, but mm. also colleague now. You know. Yeah. And um, I think my other one that I'm very proud of lately is Adelia Carrillo. With oh. event high. I would have to put her and Parissa, you know, neck and neck because they're both rocking it so much and they're doing so much. But Adelia yes. is on my committee at the Women's Canada Awards. She's on multiple other committees. She also um, does cameos on the Hyatt Nine News when she's available. And uh, she's just an absolutely delightful human being. And then I think the last would probably be. I love Miss Taylor Blake. Hey, Miss Taylor Blake. Yes. Yeah, yeah. she what an is just a part of gold. She yeah. is just so incredibly sweet. Um, and how oh. could you? How could you not just want to get more time with Taylor? You know, she's so amazing. I was so I felt so fortunate to get some time with her on the show. Oh, so good. And it's like she just exudes this just awesome like sweetness and this like pure... gold just radiates from yeah her. yeah like, yeah I love her so much oh awesome yeah good good choices um I need to I need to talk to Christine and um, we met a couple years ago when we were both um speaking at uh, South by we both had panels but anyway I need to reconnect with her and I need to talk with her on uh feminized because yeah just even yeah. then she was like this doing so much like I couldn't even believe it yeah um but uh okay okay so last question last sure. question Mandy last what advice do you have for 13 year old Mandy Ooh, 13 year old Mandy okay so all due respect to my mom 13 year old Mandy needed to be told that her mom doesn't know everything. Okay. And 13 year old Mandy needed to hear that you will be successful. You don't have to be scared of being successful. You don't have to be scared of failure. You're going to be successful. Yes. And only think of that. Mm. When you focus on what, is going to come whether it's good or bad that is eminent okay mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. if good is to come and you're only like this is where i'm going this is what i'm focused on this is where i'm headed that's that's where you're headed it's yeah. in softball and i think you, you reference softball i think your daughter plays but yeah. softball, the number one rule you teach someone when they're throwing a ball is to look where you're going to throw yeah same thing oh yeah in your life look where you're going to go love that God, I love that advice. That's incredible. So it's like, psst, don't listen to your mom. And uh, you got this. You got this. Yeah. When, when, however you get there, it doesn't matter. You're yeah. going to get there. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, my God, Mandy. So how can people find you? Uh, I think the easiest place is probably Instagram. Um, I'm at Lady Silverleaf or on Twitter at Highly Mandy. And that's Mandy with two N's, M-A-N-N-D-I-E. Um, reach out to me on either one of those platforms is probably the easiest and fastest. And, um, I would love to connect. Mandy, you are just a joy. And, um, I'm really excited about what's to come with all of your projects, but especially the women's Canada awards. I feel like oh, it's yeah. time we get dressed up. Start um, buying your dresses, ladies. That's get right. Your suit. Yeah. No farm boots at the women's Canada awards. <laughs> I'm looking fresh to death. I love it. 
Um, ladies, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for listening to the show. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for rating and reviewing. It really helps um, other amazing women and dudes too um, find out what's happening with women in cannabis. Um, until uh, until next time. Yep. Bye. <laughs> If you'd like more, subscribe to the Feminized Podcast on YouTube. Follow at Feminized with Liz Grow on Instagram. Special thanks to our sponsors, Moose Labs and Richard's Rainwater. The Feminized Podcast is a Grow House Media production created by Liz Grow, produced by Patrick Pope and Dennis Ray, with original theme music and audio mixing by Q at Q to King Productions in New Braunfels, Texas.